Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. We only find them when they're dead. Issue number two. Okay. Uh, I don't have a problem with this book, except that it's really hard to place the characters. We could possibly make this comic book a whole lot better if only we can understand these people a little bit better and who everybody is and stealing call signs and stuff like that. And Anyway, it's good. It's solid. This is, like, you want to talk about an indie book, something that is destined to wind up becoming a tv series or movie or something at some point it's gonna be you're gonna be really hard pressed to find better than this but we still have to remember this is a comic book and rely when you rely too much on the images but the images simply are not depicting what you clearly want them to depict you have to give us a little bit more than this if by issue three they don't start describing people and really giving a little bit more this is going to be really problematic. We're going to give credit where credit's due, then we're going to talk a lot more about that. So, written by Al Ewing, illustrated by Simone DeMio, who also does the main cover. Uh, color assists by Maria, Sama, uh, Maria Sara Miotta, Mioti, and uh, letters by Andwall Design. A couple of variant covers out there. Enjoy. So, anyway, um, basically, you've got George. I think it's just George instead of George's. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, 80% sure, maybe 70, anyway. Um, so, turns out he's gay. He's with that guy, Jason. Um, Jason's sister is on the ship also. Not entirely sure of everybody who's on the ship, because some blonde girl keeps on showing up, and I can't be sure if this is in the past or in the present, because there's only like a year separating what's going on here. And there's a thing with the parents of George happening, and oh no, it looks like, you know, the freaking George Richter or whatever. It's like, oh, it looks like his parents did something potentially bad, and Paula was on his side, but now she's not, and she doesn't forget. She'll always be there, but she won't. There's a lot going on here, and very little unraveling. So look, two issues in, we get a, a name drop for these characters, or, you know, excuse me, for the, for the name of the book here, George actually says several points. We only find them when they're dead. We get the slightest bit. It seems like he wants to find a live God because instead of just mining this person, which of course in reality is just, they're a bunch of parasites eating a dead body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm genuinely concerned by this. It feels like they're all just trapped in these ships for the most part. They don't have much of anything else going on for their lives. It's like feudalism back in the day. You're a serf. You're a serf. This is your job. S-E-R-F, if anybody's not familiar with the term. Uh, feel free to look it up. Like, you will work this farm, and that is your life. And pretty much, there is no leaving for you. This is your life. You're not never going to see the outside of the ship or the outside of this, you know plantation style walled residence like this is your whole life from this point on possibly for more than a generation yeah that sucks genuinely does um they talk about mandatory there's a lot of social commentary in here that is so perfectly hidden case in point the mandatory fines that they're given here because they've got to meet a quota yeah, I know there's a lot of people who are like, police don't have quotas. Yeah, but as somebody who actually knows police, and I know, uh, you know what, that doesn't even matter because there's going to be people who are going to be just as hyperbolical and say, I know police and there is no quota. Listen, anyway, it's my experiences and my conversations with close personal friends and a former family member, uh, former family member, and a, and a family member who was formerly a police officer that, yes, there absolutely are quotas, but hey, maybe they call them something different. Um, so the idea that there are quotas here, um, and you and one time somebody so-called fulfills a quota, you're working your entire life to pay off the debt because you don't have anything. Everything is paid for by debt here, kind of like in the current day, right? Yo, <laughs> this is insane how detailed this sci-fi world is where we can have current social commentary but it's in the future and it's sci-fi so it doesn't count right and it's just just surface level enough to be able to recognize it for what it is if you're if you're trying to find it but in general it's just something you gloss over and it's like oh wow i can't imagine living in a society like that 
but we do. What? I don't know what you're talking about. No, we don't. So, yeah, it's it's fantastic. That being said, um, the blonde woman in here, Paula, uh, apparently like, she's the main, the main, I don't know, regulator, <laughs> basically, you know, the, 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 the land, I, what would you, what would you call them? The, there were the plantation owners, there were the slaves, and then there's the, the, the people who were supposed to keep everybody in line and they were just as poor and horrible whatever but they didn't have a whip cracking on them you know what i'm saying like th those guys so those guys anyway um that's pretty much what she is she's she's basically like she goes after she's a slave runner there we go she's a slave runner and if somebody does something wrong then she goes out and she or if one of the slaves tries to escape she runs off and she tries to capture them but we saw in the previous issue that she's got something very personal going on with George and she doesn't like him. And based on what his family's done, they're all the same, right? L listen to the commentary that's in here. They're all the same. Um, if your family did it, then you're going to do it because genetics is just the way that life is. It's the way that you are and you can't help it, but I'm going to be here to make sure that I screw with you every turn that I possibly can. Remember the previous issue, uh, we're going to inspect you and I'm going to make sure that you have five inspections, five full, like basically full cavity search inspections so that you are not going to be able to celebrate what you got. You're not going to be able to enjoy most of the rewards or reap the rewards of, of, you know, this particular dead God that we found and whatnot. Very few, uh, opportunities for you to do much of anything. I'm going to purposefully screw with you because I know that you're bad. It's basically the self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, I know that you're a bad person, so I'm going to keep on dogging you until you eventually become a bad person. And then I can say, see, I told you, self-fulfilling prophecy. The world sucks, bro. It really does. So he finally does run. And she's right up on, like, when I say literally on his ass, in order for her, for them to see that she's behind him, she has to be in line of sight with her eyes, not with tracking scanners, with her eyes. That's how close she is to this person. And they're both going at the exact same speed. So there is no, oh, what if she bumps into him? No, they're both going at the speed of light. That's C. They're going at the speed of light, not faster, not slower, not even remotely, the exact same. And therefore, um, she could be like this close, you know, and, and they're never going to bump unless he drops out first. But she can always set her scanners, which she probably has, to drop out the second, the moment that he drops out. So, you know, oh, no, 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 it's still good. And now I'm going to get you. So, and she's got a brand new ship and it's hyper, you know, hooked up. And he's got this old clunky ship that's not even made for uh, escaping or for fighting or anything like that. It's looking like George and his crew are screwed. Um, She... <laughs> She went hard on him in the previous issue. And in this issue, she seems to be out for a medical leave. And it was basically all just bait. She was taking somebody else's name, uh, somebody else's handle, in order to trick, very specifically, George and his crew. He went, he went radio silent. You're not supposed to go radio silent. Because there is there are no secrets. The ship has ears. And he points out that the ship has ears even when the comms are turned off. Bro, like, could you imagine living in society like that? Well, a lot of us can. Uh, clearly, um, Al Ewing can also, and he's putting this in his work. I'm telling you, this is one of the best sci-fi stories out there. But again, the problem comes from you expecting that your artist is going to be able to clearly depict certain things when I can't tell what's happening. There are certain space maneuvers on here that Apparently, I was supposed to be able to see what was going on there. I just saw a bunch of blurs. Uh, if that's what you were hoping to convey, congratulations. You did it perfectly because I do not understand what had generally happened. And I've got the gist of it, enough to follow along. But I really wanted to see what these maneuvers were that they were doing so I could actually, you know, better appreciate the story. I couldn't. So uh, whatever. My loss, I guess. Right. Um, also, trying to recognize is Paul that person from a year ago? Where he where he'd gotten food poisoning, but his family didn't, even though they ate from the same vendor. Like it looks like there actually is a bar or some kind of a place like the flagship that they can go to. I need more. I need more detail. It's like you know that this wouldn't perfectly translate into 
uh, a TV series, you'd have to give the idea that they, excuse me, that they don't only live on their ships. Um, if they didn't only live on their ships, right? So one scene from a bar a year ago, maybe they took on a, maybe they took on a a role that they didn't have before. And they said, "Oh yeah, well, well, since my family died, I'm going to go and become a part of this thing where I will live on my ship with my crew." For X amount of years, you know, a decade or whatever, you know, saying this was just my reprieve that I get to come back to the flagship or the home world or F all whatever, you know, I know there's no home world at this point. So there's too much going on and not enough information. And it was a great way to hide a lot of the information by saying, uh, turn off the comms. Okay, so we can talk a little bit, but the ship still has ears, meaning there might be a traitor on there or maybe the, the place is bugged. Don't forget, even though comms were turned off. You had five full bot, full and full ship inspections. Somebody on there could have just been like, "Ah, eh, what's up?" Boop, you know, put a, a a comm, a tracer on there, so that Paula could hear what's going on. Like I said, a lot happened in here. We, I need to understand who all of these characters are. I need to have a reminder of the names of these characters, possibly in the front or even in the back of the book. Give me a ship's log. You know, what I'm saying a crew log. And uh, tell me about this person who's, you know, Paul, who's chasing them down. I need to know more about what's going on. The cool part is I need to know more. Not just I need to know more, otherwise I can't follow along with the book. No, I really need, I'm invested. I have to know more of what's going on. Uh, that being said, I really do look forward to this one day becoming a part of the series. Um, I also am, a, this is one of those books where on a rare occasion, I am a little bit envious of the people who get to wait and see this in a trade paperback and say, oh, I wonder what this is, and pick it up and get all, you know, the first five or six issues and and have a good arc and a good understanding in one sitting instead of waiting a month in between. Wow, bro, wow. Anyway, guys, if you're looking for a good sci-fi indie book, you will not find better than this right here. I'm telling you, I've spoken, it's out there. Hey. Like the video, watch an ad. I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you for part three. That's pretty much guaranteed. Rock style. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.